स्टॉक मार्केट समझ नहीं आता इट इज टू कॉम्प्लेक्स यार मैं मैथ्स में अच्छी नहीं हूँ स्कूल में पढ़ाते नहीं है सो डोंट नो अभी टाइम है बाद में सीख लेंगे स्टॉक मार्केट देर आर सम एक्सक्यूज दैट वी कम अक्रॉस सेवरल पीपल हु लैक फाइनेंशियल लिटरेसी जहां बाकी सबके लिए ये प्रॉब्लम थी बट फॉर वन मैन दिस वॉज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी बिकॉज ही मेड इज लाइफ मिशन टू मेक पीपल फाइनेंशियली लिटरेट क्लासिक रॉक सिंगल मॉल्ट फोटोग्राफी एंड स्टॉक मार्केट Yes, I am talking about none other than Mr. Karthik Rangappa, the mastermind behind Zerodha Varsity. He single-handedly created and wrote fourteen modules with various chapters on introduction to stock market, technical and fundamental analysis, risk management, taxation, personal finance, and what not. एक लाख से भी ज़्यादा investor doubts को Mr. Rangappa ने खुद personally answer किया है. I mean, ये एक mountain Everest चढ़ने जैसा कम थोड़ी ना है. and today we have him amongst us jahan par hum unse seekhenge market and usse judi hui bahut si cheezon ke bare mein so let's start our investing lesson 101 with mr kartik rangappa welcome sir welcome to investing lessons 101 at yadnya and the very first question that i'm going to ask you is that how has this journey of being a financial and investing teacher okay uh yeah see for this i'll have to kind of uh, rewind back to 2008 2009 um okay so uh, actually 2009 2010 so uh, back then i had this um, firm i'd started a firm with a partner of mine mm-hmm. uh, where the idea was to manage uh, money for people and advise them on their investments okay. right the agenda was super simple uh we would we would take care of the investments and at the end of the year we would run through the pnl and whatever was the profits we would charge like a 10% uh, fee for managing that money mm. uh, while the projected cash flow and all looked very nice uh, markets were also doing all right uh, there was one problem uh, there was no month on month cash flow and, okay. uh, and we had to pay bills right mm. so that we were in a very difficult spot and one day my uh, wife very casually advised me that you know why don't you give your give it give teaching a try so and so that you have some sort of cash flow coming in and you will be in a better spot to uh, you know uh, deal with the deal with the pressure of bringing okay. you know, cash flow on a monthly basis while all the wisdom for the uh, wisdom of managing money was for the outside world uh, mm-hmm. my own finances were uh, in a very tight spot right uh, so with that in mind uh, i mean i i kind of ignored her advice uh, but it kind of lingered on a few mm-hmm. weeks later uh, i saw this advertisement in uh, newspaper uh, it said uh, you know stock market stock market beginner course uh, offered okay. by nse and manipal i was like uh, who is uh, who in bangalore is going to be delivering this program right so mm-hmm. because at that point you know, hardly any people uh, doing stock market courses in bangalore so i was very curious to know who was it that uh, that is actually delivering this program and i straight walked into manipal office and uh, it was like a cold call i just walked in there mm-hmm. and i said i want to talk to people who are organizing this okay and uh, and finally you know uh, with with uh, with lot of um, Uh, difficulty i got through to people who were conducting this program and i asked them who is running the show for you mm. uh, and the gentleman said we've got some professor from uh, b school he will run the program for us so at that point i kind of hard sold the idea that a stock market program should not be uh, delivered through a academic professional it has to be someone who's got real time experience and i am the guy who got that uh, experience right so i did a i did a you know a bit of sales a bit of sales for myself and mm-hmm. i kind of find up uh, the deal to teach people stock market uh, related stuff uh, and i didn't realize that what was like a cold walk into manipal to teach stock markets would end up in me doing close to about 400 odd workshops across uh, the state of karnataka right so uh, and uh, once i started doing it uh, i initially started doing it uh, for the sake of uh, paying my bills but i eventually realized that i really enjoy what i was trying to do 
right and and then from then on one thing led to another and uh, and it's kind of become a, a mainstream uh, you know career for me right actually i was reading uh, this book another day and uh, there it was written that the new opportunities come to you when you least expect it and especially uh when you've reached the rock bottom because if you've yeah. not reached the rock bottom you will never realize that it's an opportunity for yourself yeah 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 i can't agree more on that so absolutely absolutely so so then after from like once you realize that it was teaching then how varsity happened because financial yeah. education is such a dry subject it's very technical it's boring it's monotonous so how do you thought that you know you have to bring that uh, i would not say entertainment but that sparked with that people should know about it they should learn about it yeah so uh, i'll tell you how varsity happened so uh, so nitin and i have been uh, you know we go back a long time we've been friends for a while and okay. he knew that i was uh, i was into uh, education and i was training people he knew that you know i've been doing several uh, workshops across across the state so um, and then uh, you know uh, one fine day we met and he was like you know this is this is a gap that needs to be filled on a much larger scale and we need to right. and this right. is uh, financial literacy is a problem right i mean mm-hmm. uh, people are hardly aware of uh, how to transact in the markets and and this is a much larger problem and we should give it a shot to uh, to spread financial literacy in the country so that's roughly how uh, varsity started uh, i'll tell you why um, your, your second part about uh, you know finance being a dry subject and mm. uh, how to actually tackle that so uh, finance is dry because people want to keep it that way right so yeah. they li- they like to add jargons they like to add some degree of complexity to financial uh, uh, you know literature financial articles uh, because i don't know maybe because if you if you add that complexity you may end up feeling good about yourself right mm-hmm. because you're dealing, you're you're discussing a complex topic uh, okay. but finance yeah. is actually super simple it's uh, nothing more than your uh, uh, high school uh, mathematics right it it need not be uh, anything more complicated than that so when we started varsity the agenda was super clear we will use as little jargons as possible mm-hmm. and and we will use it only if it's absolutely necessary and right from day one we decided to keep it so simple that even uh, you know a, a layman can understand what's happening right so you read an article you at at a later stage you should realize oh this is a finance article right <laughs> so 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 with that kind of mindset we started uh, uh, developing the content and i think uh, we've done a fairly decent job with that uh, many people have come back and told us that uh, they like varsity for the simplicity of the simplicity of the articles and it's mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of easy to absorb what was being uh, delivered so yeah. hopefully uh, you know uh, with that style of writing that style of content delivery uh, the dryness of the subject is gone absolutely right because i myself have visited varsity I've read so many articles there and the way you said at times the concept is actually very simple we complicated or we think if it is not complex it is yeah. i mean i remember when i was in school and we would solve our maths problems we yeah. would spend more time on solving complex problems and not yeah. the simple yeah. ones and we would not yeah. been able to do the simple problems in class yeah yeah because yeah, we absolutely. thought that it is supposed to be complex itna simple question thore na dalenge so i think... i'll give you an example for that uh, long ago okay uh, there is this very simple concept of uh, moving average crossover so hmm. it's it's basically you identify a trend uh, based on where the 100 day moving average is tra- uh, you know is positioned with respect to the latest stock price right now in its simplest form uh, it's a very very simple uh, you know a technique to follow and uh, and it kind of keeps you in the trend uh, for a long period of time right and yeah. and it's very yeah. easy to uh, profit from it now i was asking a a friend of mine if it's so simple why why do uh, you know people not follow this mm-hmm. uh, even a 10th standard uh, you know a uh, kid can follow this so mm-hmm. he was uh, and he mentioned that you know because it's so simple people don't like it 
we like to complicate things uh, if it is finance it has to be a complicated stuff right mm. it has to be uh, there has to be a lot of numbers there has to be number crunching there has to be models there has to be uh, some some degree of complexity only then you get that intellectual satisfaction probably so so maybe that's one of the reason why people like to complicate it okay moving on to the next question uh, continuation to varsity now we i have seen that you are bringing varsity junior um right. i was actually also looking one of your videos uh, that you have put up, put up on varsity um, with regards to compounding and right. uh, a lot of people commenting that it takes down takes us back to those malgudi days and everything yeah. i just wanted to know that do you feel that kids are ready to uh, adapt to such a comp- i mean not i will not say complicated but is there age ready to adapt such a concept so uh, okay so uh, let me give you uh, let me share a recent experience with you uh, i even wrote a blog around this uh, sharing my experience uh, i put it up on a company's blog z connect uh, so recently i visited uh, nagpur Uh, mm-hmm. i was invited by the zilla parishad uh, council there uh, to help them frame a curriculum to teach financial literacy to children there right okay. so when i was invited when i uh, went through the uh, profile i was like how can this be even done how can i teach uh, you know a zilla parishad school kids financial literacy right i had my own preconceived uh, notions but nevertheless it, since it was it was a challenging uh, affair i thought maybe i should uh, i should give it a shot so i developed a curriculum i shared it with them and uh, they were like all this is fine but i think you should just come here and spend some time with the kids okay that's like, fine let me go there so uh, i i went to the schools right i i visited uh, at least four or five different schools uh, these schools are located far off from nagpur with uh, with very minimum infrastructure right so proper villages and hardly any infrastructure there middle of nowhere you will find one zilla parishad school now i was mind blown right uh, these kids in terms of financial literacy are already doing so much uh, for instance they run a student savings bank uh, concept wow. so each kid uh, comes to the school with whatever little money he or she has saved for that day it could be small amounts like 4 rupees 3 rupees 10 rupees whatever right so they come with that money and they deposit that money in the student deposit bank now there is a very formal process to do this they open a, a they they all have individual accounts mm-hmm. so they have to deposit the, this money by means of a deposit slip right okay. so there is a these kids have actually printed a slip and it's all student committee uh, run okay it's not teachers are not involved so the oh, against wow. the deposit there is an entry in the cash book right okay. so again that's uh, that's a student doing and uh, finally all the money is collected and deposit and for that day's collection is actually deposited in a single bank account so each kid knows how much money he or she has saved uh, there is a, a entry for that in the kids pass book there is an entry for that in the bank's cash book uh, the cash itself is updated on a daily basis the opening balance for uh, Uh, the closing balance of the previous day is the opening balance for today add to that the deposits minus the withdrawals and you get the closing balance all these things that kids are managing and and they save the money uh, and they use it to purchase stationery books pencils or whatever and there have been some very inspiring stories uh, most of these kids come from um, uh, backgrounds where their parents are uh, day wagers uh you know they depend on daily labor opportunities to uh, to bring food to the table for the family uh i i was t- uh, talking to one kid and um, and she was telling me that during uh, during the uh, shivratri in february uh, the family didn't have money uh, to celebrate upvas and all those things right so she pulled out 75 rupees from her account which she had saved over 6 months and gave it to the family now if this is not an example of how to build an emergency corpus i don't know what else is right so and and these kids actually uh, they also have occasional training where they learn different different life skills so uh, some of the money is used to buy diyas from a local market raw diyas they paint these diyas and they sell it back in the market each diya is bought for 1 rupee 25 paisa or something 
and the painted dias are sold in the same market for three rupees twenty paisa. So they already know what entrepreneurship is. They already know asset allocation, how to use uh, sorry capital allocation. They already know how to uh, measure their P and L, right? Okay. Now, now if if this is not an example of learning finance in the right way at the right age, I don't know what else is. So when you ask me this question, whether uh, these kids can absorb such a technical uh, concept, I think the answer is it, these kids know much more than what we imagine, okay. and yeah. they will they will understand, they will implement, provided it's all taught in a very meaningful, experiential way, right? So so that's so that's that's like a framework that I'm super impressed with, and I'm trying to do more. Um, and add to uh, whatever is already there uh, to help children uh, you know uh, understand finance better i think the story that you have told right now i believe like what i infer is that finance is all around us and exactly. kids yeah. are absorbing that content one way or the other and the idea yeah. to better it is better to direct them into a particular direction which will help them in future absolutely so, absolutely that is yeah, really and, and it has to be done in a very experiential way very practical way uh, which is what uh, these kids are doing right yeah. so so, it's, so our duty becomes to build content uh, over and top of what is already there and it should complement what they are learning already right so right. so yeah so these kids know much more than what we imagine actually right and the idea that they already know that how a bank works because uh, exactly. trust me when i went to the bank for the first time i was actually overwhelmed with the place because i didn't know which counter to go to there's so much yeah. going around in the bank i was actually looking for to my father to guide me where do i have to go where do i have to deposit and he was telling it to me because these things are not taught in our schools yeah yeah they, absolutely you just assume yeah. it to be like it's our parents responsibility that they will once one day take you to the bank and then you'll get to know and i don't know thanks to digitization that we even go i mean hardly we get to go to the banks and whenever we go again we yeah. are into that crossroads of where where to go whom to ask what to do yeah and so, and confidence is a big issue right we exactly. i mean all we yeah so we don't know we are we are struggling with a form trying to fill, fill the right things and then everyone's uh, confidence also becomes an issue for most of the kids nice Okay, sir. So the next question that I want to ask you is like, we are taking it away from varsity and more in towards investment. What is your investment philosophy, and how has it evolved over time? Yeah. Uh, see, back it has changed quite a bit over time. Um, back in the days, uh, I hardly would invest. Uh, I was a super active trader, uh, okay. and um, I, I used to trade uh, quite regularly. Uh, I've not been a successful trader. I'm, I was I was very uh, uh, average uh, trader, but but I was glued to markets. I was learning. I was trading all the day, uh, trading through the day, and uh, observing each and everything that would happen in the market. Right. So as a learning ex experience, it was great. Uh, but over time, uh, and with some regulations in place, uh, I've stopped trading now. Uh, okay. I've I've had success in terms of investing. right uh, so uh, now my investment philosophy uh, it's it's fairly simple if i can't give my investments time then uh, then then i won't even bother investing because mm. what i've realized uh, over these years is any there is the common thread uh, with all successful investments is time so if if i don't have that patient capital uh, i won't even bother investing so so time plays a very crucial role uh, in my with with my own investing so so that's that's the bottom line okay and um, once you started investing in the way you were saying that you know you have to give that time so while you are analyzing the market when you are while you are analyzing the stocks what are the few metrics that you look for before deciding that okay this is the stock that i want to invest in see uh, metrics wise uh, they're fairly standard set of uh, metrics i think uh, any decent investor would at some point rely on the same sort of metrics uh, it could be uh, a healthy return on equity it could be a mm -hmm. uh, unlevered balance sheet even if there is leverage you know the company has to have the ability to uh, uh, manage that leverage manage that debt 
then you look for all the regular uh, ratios and you know healthy profit margins uh, of course uh, you need to dig deeper into the business and see uh, what the moat is i think there's enough and more uh, uh, content around how to identify moats uh, so these are the standard uh, set of things that uh, and of course how the industry uh, itself is is spread out in terms of its landscape right how many players is it competitive Uh, what are the barriers to entry? Uh, the usual set of things so is what I really follow. Uh, what I pay uh, uh, extra attention to is the quality of management. Uh, mm. You know, uh, so how how what is the level of comfort uh, that the management gives you? Uh, I think in India, even today, one of the biggest problem is governance. Uh, okay. I think if governance is in place, then everything else is okay. Uh, as long as uh, the governance is strong even a mediocre business will deliver uh, is what i've observed and so um, so so governance is something that i spend time on trying to understand uh, the backgrounds of uh, uh, of the promoters trying to understand uh, uh, who is running the company their backgrounds uh, and their experience uh, their uh, so these are things that i spend on more more on uh, qualitative side rather than the quantitative side it basically boils down to if you understand the business you understand what quality they are able to deliver you should yeah, go for yeah. that because quantitative data is fair yeah. enough uh, available in yeah. in abundance over the internet absolutely absolutely yeah and yeah. and uh, well segregated uh, neatly presented data it, it, it's not like how it was uh, maybe a decade ago there's no noise in the data these days right exactly yeah yeah, yeah. so you can filter filter out the noise very easily exactly so while we are talking about stocks and their analysis risk management is also like an integral part of investing and as yeah. we say that diversification is something that can help you to manage that risk what do you feel that how much of a diversification should be there in portfolio and how people should manage their risk and reward ratios so uh, there are two sides of uh, two schools of thoughts when it comes to diversification one is the concentrated bets the other one is a fairly well diversified uh, portfolio okay. uh, i i believe in diversification uh, and i think uh, every portfolio should be uh, reasonably well diversified uh, both in terms of um, sector wise diversification and uh, and you know across market capitalization uh, uh, you also spoke about balancing risk reward is it uh, yes yeah so i think uh, balancing risk reward is uh, is essentially again a factor of uh, of of your appetite to take on risk right mm-hmm. so if if you if you have the appetite to take on more risk let's say you're a young investor uh, you know have plenty of years to earn and make up for uh, for whatever possible losses in the market then i think uh, taking on that additional risk going uh, maybe investing in uh, uh, slightly more aggressive stocks is okay mm-hmm. uh, and and uh, but of course if if the person is um, has a very low appetite for risk then um, then obviously you know uh, sticking to large cap and ensuring that uh, the volatility is lesser is a wise option right so now that we are talking about volatility and when we talk about markets like volatility is a part of it and uh, many people fail to understand that market is not more about numbers actually it is more about human behavior yeah because yeah. numbers somebody can teach you but somebody cannot control or teach you the human behavior that is something which comes from your own inside your own mindset so what are the few strategies that you can suggest to you know kind of maintain or manage that human behavior in such volatile markets that we are seeing these days yeah so i think uh, see we all yeah you you said it rightly uh, volatility is the nature of the market right it's mm-hmm. the nature of the beast uh, the only way uh, the only way to deal with that uh, beast is by giving it time time is the only antidote to volatility there are no second thoughts about that right uh, now how do you develop this behavior uh, of staying patient when there is volatility uh, i think in my personal opinion doing a sip in mutual fund uh, i'm not is a very good thing because um, because it teaches you how to be patient 
right mm-hmm. so i'm i'm talking about a regular direct stock investor if the person can also do a sip and and understand how to be patient then the person's uh, outcomes in stock investing gets better because uh, because sip is a great uh, mentor of sorts to uh, to teach you patience in markets so okay. apart from all the other good things that it does it also teaches you to be patient and uh, and it also teaches you to be slightly indifferent towards volatility right so you can pick up those lessons from uh, from those monthly sips that you do and incorporate that in your uh, stock investment i think uh, i think the outcomes will be good okay on the lines of that we are talking about sips i want to understand that what is like slightly better for retail investors is it investing in stocks or investing in mutual funds uh, it it really depends on uh, the person's ability to uh, understand the market so for someone who is absolutely new and uh, doesn't want to spend too much time trying to figure balance sheet pnl and cash flows then it's a very straightforward straightforward answer it, uh, it has to be mutual funds Right. but if someone right. has the appetite to learn and uh, take on a little more risk then i would suggest uh, building a portfolio right uh, so but of course this comes with a lot more uh, risk it comes with a lot more responsibility uh, on the uh, on the individual investor uh, if you're willing to take that then i think uh, uh, you know building a stock portfolio of your own is a good option but for 90% of the people's you know mutual funds is the answer right because i believe yeah. that yeah that yes stocks are like a better option but only in the case that if you are able to give enough time on researching those yeah. stocks because if you're exactly. already into some other profession you may be in uh, into yeah. it department or uh, working as a corporate employee or something like that then yeah. you do not have enough time to analyze those stocks And so then... analyze, see analyze stocks is one thing uh the way you react to prices is another thing right, right? You, you may have done wonderful analysis you may be bang on on the on on the entry and you know uh mm-hmm. the level at which you want to invest in but if you are unable to uh, handle your emotions uh, when the right. stock is 10% then the whole effort is uh, is is you know uh, washed away so mm-hmm. how do you handle yourself is the biggest lesson that uh, the person has to uh, you know kind of learn and incorporate uh, best practices without that particular you know component uh, i don't think so a person should venture into uh, direct stock investment right in addition to all these things that you've mentioned uh what do you think are few mistakes that the retail investors make when they make an entry into the markets i think the biggest mistake they uh, make is uh, entering the market with wrong set of expectations right mm-hmm. so they expect they would have seen some influencer on uh, instagram talking about doubling the money over uh, 14 days so and mm-hmm. they expect they can uh, replicate they they can expect that you know such a thing is easily possible uh and in order to chase that they end up doing uh, stupid things and uh, washing off all their capital right? right so setting the expectation is very very important and you can set your expectations right only by understanding what market has done and what it is likely to uh, how it's likely to behave uh you know uh, understanding that volatility is the very nature of market so you once you understand these things uh, properly uh, you can set realistic expectations and that kind of helps you develop a good base for your investing journey right okay now the next thing that i want to ask you is slightly off the topic and that's on uh, passive investing what are your views on passive investing uh passive investing uh, is a great tool not just for beginners but even for experienced uh, you know investors mm-hmm. uh, you get a very low cost entry uh, you get a very low cost opportunity to invest in the markets and uh, as long as you expect market returns uh, 
passive investment is a great option i personally also do uh, passive uh, in investing uh, i do uh, indexing uh, a part of my portfolio is is uh, indexed and um, and i think it's 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 a very calm way of uh, dealing with the markets and uh, you know experiencing whatever market uh, generates in terms of returns so i think it should be a component in uh, most of the portfolio the last question but not the last thing of this session so the last question that i want to ask you is that what advice would you want to give to the investors in the current market in the current market um see uh, it again goes back to uh, volatility uh, what we are witnessing right now is uh, is is volatility we are seeing uh, drawdowns but this is the nature of market you can't really help it uh, get your expectations right please come with patient capital uh, you know you won't get your returns over time returns can be lumpy uh, bulk of your returns may come uh, at a later stage but you know 80% of the time you are invested you may be just experiencing volatility this is how markets are uh, so don't get spooked by it uh, keep your uh, investment steady Uh, if you're doing something like a systematic investment plan, don't stop them. Uh, it's the most stupidest thing to do, uh, and uh, and just continue. Uh, understand that uh, you know. Uh, understand the nature of market and keep going. So there is. Don't overcomplicate it. Right. Yeah, I think okay. uh, so at some point you have to grow dispassionate towards uh, these investments. Uh, mm. Stop checking uh, the returns on a daily basis. Uh, it's going to do more harm than benefiting you so so yeah so keep these things in mind and uh, and then chug along right absolutely right that's like a really great and wonderful advice moving on to the next segment i would want to call it as a bullish game so i would give okay. you two options and you just have to pick one like the more bullish you are on okay okay so the very first thing is warren buffett or peter lynch peter lynch okay mf or etf uh mf in india for now <laughs> okay varsity or varsity junior oh the fun but uh, my heart is in junior right now okay uh teaching investing or investing teaching because it enables so many more people right right fundamental or technical fundamentals value strategy or momentum strategy that's a tough one uh, because i follow both but uh, maybe momentum okay i think you might have not asked this question to yourself and now you know the answer to it yeah exactly yeah okay the last one is the uh, classic rock or single malt oh <laughs> classic rock Okay, that's that's great. And now I want to ask you the last question, and that is that if you had to describe Indian market, Indian stock market in three words, what would be what it would be? Indian market in three words: um, regulatorily, it is super stable. Okay. Um, uh, what else? Um, this is a tough one i can't <laughs> can't make up anything so but but uh, all i would like to say is um, is i think uh, right now the ecosystem is so robust uh, mm. there is healthy competition in uh, in in uh, you know market infrastructure providers uh, there is uh, the regulators are on top of things to ensure that retail investor is not only protected but also ensuring that the market is growing so so that gives so much more stability so if you are sitting on the sidelines but worried about all the different scams that you would have heard of uh, don't worry because uh, because because we are in a very good spot today and it's only going to get better so sorry that was not three words but this is what i genuinely <laughs> feel about markets yeah i strongly believe and i think our regulators uh, our infrastructure uh, is far more uh, better compared to so many other western markets Uh, you actually end up feeling proud about it right so so so, uh, so now the environment is set in such a way that um, systemic wise there is hardly any risk the risk only comes from your own behavior uh, 
on how you deal with your money uh, in markets right so, so, so it's we are in a good state okay sir so this was all about our session and we learned so much about the markets and along with that i think investors would have also had that insight about why financial education financial literacy is important and i believe that this session helps them that they start this habit of financial literacy in their children because even the yeah. investors might not the retail investors might not know that their kids have so much knowledge like the story yeah. that you share i hope this session helps a lot of people thank you so thank much you. sir for uh, making thank our you. time for this uh, session and being on yadnya platform thank you so much for the opportunity